All right, hey there YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're gonna be doing a little welding today. I'm gonna build that GoPro stand like I was telling you about. You might have seen that in a previous video, me mentioning that. But I got the uh, pieces together for it. If it looks weird, I'm trying to train myself to look in at the camera instead of looking at the viewfinder, which is my phone. This is one of those GoPro uh, Hero Session cameras. It's a little cute with no screen. So my phone's right here. And that's the viewfinder because I have it, you know, it's hooked up with Wi-Fi to the camera. So I'm looking at the picture right now. So if you catch me looking at that, that's what I'm doing. Um, but I'm going to try to train myself to make eye contact with you. Seems a little weird, right, viewer? There is no fourth wall. Y'all are in my shop. So, um, yeah, so this is a flywheel off of like a 14 and a half Briggs that I changed out not too long ago. You can probably see... Uh, some of the magnets are missing out of it. They, I don't know what happens. Sometimes these just come unglued and you know, they wreak havoc on the stator and stuff underneath there. So this is garbage. You know, it literally came off the scrap pile outside. That's why it has the nice orange surface rust here, flash rust and all that. This is some kind of shipping bracket that holds uh, new Bobcat lawnmowers down to their shipping crates. And then I've got some other pieces of square tubing here that I don't even know where they came from. But right now they got these brackets kind of holding them together. I mean, this is like some bent up junk. So, but I don't really care because it's it's something I use in the shop. So it needs to be tough and ugly. So, uh, yeah, so it really doesn't matter if it's rusty or not. I actually kind of like it rusty because it makes it look like it's supposed to be out here. Um, but the, the biggest hurdle I'm going to have to overcome is... Uh, welding to this flywheel because this bracket and those tubes are mild steel they're not too different in uh, wall thickness or anything like that but you know we got this big piece of cast iron which is going to be already a challenge because we're welding to similar metals which can be done but it's kind of tricky because this might want to crack or have a heat riser a stress riser around this nose cone here that's gonna make the possibly made the make the weld crack. I'm gonna try to preheat like this nose cone in the center section of this. Try to uh, limit the cracking that might happen. It's not a big deal because this camera weighs ounces and the the tubing is pretty thin, so it's not very heavy. But um, so there's you know and everything's rusty, so that's a little bit of a challenge too. But I'm using flux core wire, so it doesn't really matter that much. I might brush it up a little bit if I'm feeling nice, feeling nice to the metal and to the welder. But um, so it's gonna be, it's gonna work kind of like a microphone stand. You know, you got the heavy base. I'm gonna make a, a a small round plate to go over here. I guess I'm just gonna cut a square out of this, tack it down to this, and then cut a circle off of it with the, uh, you know, kind of grind the edges down to a circle with a with an angle grinder. It's gonna be ugly but uh, that's awesome. But, you know, my main goal today is to one-up Donald Trump and his presidency because I am going to make old junk great again and I can prove it to you and it's only going to take me a few minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut these brackets out of the middle of these square tubes so I have one tube ready to go that's usable. I haven't even split the two, so I'm going to cut that off and uh, jump cut back when I've got a usable piece of metal. So, see you in a second. Alright, so, it was like 10 or 15 minutes for you, or for me, about a second for you. So, here's the little piece that I cut out to use for... Yeah, it's a little big for the nose cone, uh, but what, like I was saying, what I'm going to do is probably line it up so like two sides are set up with the cone there. And I just tack it on there. Um, maybe weld up underneath on these two sides and just grind around it until there's a decent looking circle. Maybe not even decent, maybe just sort of circular. <laughs> I'll just round the edges over. And uh, here's the... Here's the upright post here. Uh, I'm about 5'8". You know, it goes up to about my nose. So, 
little over five feet. Um, there's a weld here, or that was on there. I kind of smoothed that down a little bit. This ain't about looking good here. It's just about holding it up. And these welds aren't going to look very good because of the dissimilar metals and the rust and all that good stuff. But I'm not even going to use this except to get the slag off of the welds because it just really doesn't matter that much. That's one nice thing about using flux core wire. Um, if I was using gas, none of this would be acceptable. Flux core just kind of burns through all the rust. And you're allowed to have subpar conditions. The last time I used the welder, it ran out of wire, so we have to spool some in. We'll try to keep it from being a bird's nest. That's no easy task. At least not for me. You might be looking at me like, what do you mean? That's My mom can do that. Look at me. I don't even have a wrench to take the, uh, the nut off. So I'll be back. You guys watch the welder for me, all right? You're loyal, you're still here. I should have jump cut, but oh well. Oh, I don't even remember what size the nut is. It's been that long since I've had to refill it. I'm getting rusty. I'm about as rusty as this. My welding skills are about as rusty as this metal. This is all the boring stuff, but you want to be in the shop with me, you got to watch me do it, I guess. figure out which spool it is eventually too. Pull all the old wire out. It sucks, you actually have to waste the wire. I mean it's not a lot, but it's still just part of having a wire feed welder without a spool gun, you have to waste some of it. Yeah, I'm already pushing my limit here about to make a bird's nest. Because if this wire slips out from under my finger, it's all over with. 
because ideally you want to clamp the, you want to have the, the spring kind of pushing against the spool before you even start undoing your wire. Because if I was to clamp it down in the feed roller right now, the the wire would still find a way to unravel and spin the roll, the wheel, the uh, what do you call it, the roller out. It's probably too tight, but it'll work for this right this second. If you have any welding experience, you'll probably be like, where's your cup? Well, it's gasless. And I feel like it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing without the cup. And I can get in a lot tighter space without it. Probably affects my stick out a little bit, but it'll be alright. started. Shall we? Go all Darth Vader on you. Oh yeah. I want to make a liar out of myself. I did say I was going to preheat that nose cone. Use some map gas, really put the heat to it. Getting my temperature gun for all that. Hope I don't burn myself. It scared me. I didn't even really do nothing. It, is, it probably is cast iron. Massive. Massive thermal mass. That sounds redundant, but it is massive. Let's see how this turns out. Embarrassing.
welding is completing a circuit. You can't complete a circuit without the other side of the circuit. That might actually give me a better angle to look at it. used this brand of uh, welding wire before either. Well, I have because this is what the welder shipped with, but I haven't used it in a long time since I found the, the Lincoln Inner Shield. That stuff works great, but nobody locally sells it and I don't want to wait for it, so I got the Hobart wire. Should be able to do it this time unless that's too much rust for the ground. Here's something cool. Let's see if I can show it to you. You know, the heat actually draws the, uh, you know, the heat actually does some things to the metal. Um, you can probably see that. I'm not totally sure. But it's kind of tilted it up off of the uh, nose cone because the, the heat actually draws the metal away when it, when it contracts after it's done melting. It done melted. welding gloves. I have welding gloves, but I don't know where I put them. This is my storage unit after all. Everything's packed away. It actually looks pretty decent. I was expecting it to be far worse. looking things around. It's one of those ugly but got it where it counts kind of things. I think that'll hold whenever I uh, whenever I get the uh, rest of it put, it put together. <laughs> Shoot, just for the sake of being ugly I might just weld all around the bottom and not even not even worry about the uh, grinding it off to a circle. I might just do that later. This is like really not critical whatsoever. It just needs to kind of work. I'm going to do the whole thing.
Yeah, I played around with the settings and got like really bad, like, I don't even know what you'd call that. Looked like some kind of cancer. It's not even passable for an amateur. Yeah, I should have left the settings where they were when I started. Yeah, fairly smooth weld, and then you get this like tumor that probably hasn't even got good penetration. Actually, I can guarantee it because it just looks like blobs on the surface. It's not even doing anything. It ain't doing nothing. the settings back in where they should be. embarrassing. Almost as bad as the ground. That's bad. Oh well. I just won't use that as a part of my welding resume. dirt and rust. That's great. <coughs> That's great. Alright, let's make it happen, Cap. It's probably going to be super crooked. Don't care. You know, I might make this a little bit better looking. Try to I should give a disclaimer. Normally I do care about the stuff I'm doing, but in this case it's really just a simple, it's something really simple and it doesn't, it's not critical whatsoever. I think I've probably said that a couple times, but it's not a big deal. That's, uh, that's fairly straight. Plus, you know, if I'm not sitting here using it, this thing's probably going to be beating around in the back of my truck, so... This thing will be beating around in the back of my truck, so if I, you know, made it pretty, it might suck that it gets beat around in the back of the truck. So. Let's see. My studio lighting here. Make sure it's not pointing at your face.
pretty squared up. It's about as good as it's going to get. Clean it up and finish that bead. It's actually respectable looking. So we can get all this lag off of it. Got a little bit of spatter, but that just has to do. Actually, this wire seems to be more spattery than the Lincoln stuff, anyway. To be quite honest, it's not all just my amateurish skill level. Yeah, but that doesn't look like total garbage. I don't live with that, so do that again. See if I can repeat that. Yeah, these little projects like this actually help you to get a better feel for the welding because you're not worried about it. You're just doing it. You're just getting in here in the shop, laying down a bead, seeing what it looks like, and adjusting. To because uh, you can you can usually tell if you've watched other people weld or if you've looked in any kind of welding textbooks or done enough welding yourself and had experience you know failure is a good teacher so if you've had welds that have failed you'll know what not to do next time but in this case I did a lot of YouTube videos and actually read a little bit of welding textbooks I have no formal training on this it doesn't turn out great all the time but for the most part well I've actually never had a weld fail to be completely honest they don't ever really look that great, but they always work. So that's really all that matters, isn't it? I'm not cake welding. I don't have a good ground. Probably work better if I did. really spattering a lot and I don't remember I guess it is this wire because the Lincoln wire really doesn't spatter this much and I'm kind of disappointed I spent that wire wasn't cheap I don't know what the prices are where you're at but it's $23 for two pounds of that wire it is ugly wrap up part one really once I'm done with this
turned out a little better. It really is shocking the difference that different wire makes. Pretty astounding actually. That would be funny. I hold it up to the camera and it just falls off. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, check out my welding skills. Couldn't even hold 25 pounds. Let's see if I can give you a little carousel view of it. Yummy, don't it? That one don't look too bad. Yeah, that one's okay. Ugh. Yuck. Well, look at all the spatter. Look at that. Let's see if we can see that. Yeah, look at look at all that. Ew. Gross. Well, grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't, except for I'm not that vain, so I'm not even going to use a grinder and paint. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have officially outdone Donald Trump, because I just made gr old junk great again. See, next time, when I do the upper part, and then the uh, camera mount on the end of it. So this is just uh, the first half of me doing the camera camera stand. See you next time, part two.